Hello there, podcast listener, and welcome to What Scares Us, a podcast where four friends discuss the movies that make us show off our scars, steal the holiday roasts out of our wives' freezers, and that make us say, Ah, oh, what? <laughs> My name is Matt. I'm Christopher. I'm Amanda. And I'm Allison. So today we are diving into, literally deep diving into <laughs> 1975's bona fide classic, Jaws. A couple of fun facts before we kind of talk about our first viewing experiences with it. Some of the taglines for this movie, the official one is the terrifying motion picture from the terrifying number one bestseller, which I think is pretty boring. Um, <laughs> then there are a couple of other ones I thought were funny were, you'll never go in the water again. <laughs> and then on the 4th of July, fishing season will be open on you. <laughs> kind of dumb, but but I still like it. Um, this movie was shot on location in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. It was originally intended for a holiday release in 1974, but production was marred with delays and reshoots that led to it being a summer release in 1975, which I think probably really benefited. Imagining this as a Christmas movie is kind of hilarious. <laughs> Uh, The shark model, affectionately named Bruce after Spielberg's lawyer, required 14 operators to control its moving parts. (laughs) Yikes. And this movie also won three Oscars, one for best sound, best editing, and the best score for John Williams' now legendary score. And finally, over 67 million people in the U.S. went to see this film when it was initially released, making it the first ever summer blockbuster. Now, my first experience with this movie, I don't know the exact age, but I would have been under the age of five is when I saw it. And I would have been on vacation, um, I think, on Lake Michigan somewhere. Uh, I don't think I saw the entire thing in the first sitting, but I remember that it scared the shit out of me um, and made me very leery of deep water where you couldn't see what was going on underneath. I will spoil sort of the ending of this podcast and say, I fucking love this movie. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this, th- this movie just rules and it's perfect. So many directors owe so much to it. Um, but what are the rest of your experiences with this movie? Well, I did not see this in the theater when it came out, even though I was a little bit older. But we always had ponds in the the back fields, and I had seen the trailers on TV. So swimming in the ponds, as deep as they are, was always kind of scary. Thinking about Jaws, we would sometimes psych ourselves up and think, what if there was a shark down there? (laughs) But, uh, so I've seen the movie a number of times since the original viewing. I don't know when that was. And I also love this movie for so many reasons. And watching it just for the podcast again, I got to see a lot of things that I had somehow missed before. So I'm really excited to see what everyone thinks about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I also love this movie. I don't remember the first time. I, I didn't even think about it coming before coming here, but I don't remember the first time I saw Jaws. I didn't see it as like a kid in the 80s. I'm sure it was on somewhere, but I feel like I wouldn't have been a movie that would have been on in my house. We would have watched other like rated our adult adventures versus Jaws. I, um, I do want to ask my mom if she's read the book, though. I think that would have... But I don't remember my first experience, um, but I have seen the movie way too many times to count. At some point in like my like young adult to adult life, it became a movie I watch every summer. It's my 4th of July movie. Just pop it out in the summer. I just love summer feel-good movies, and this is here. Um, but I did read the book for the first time, or I listened to it on audio. Um, for me, those words are interchangeable, but I did read it for the first time before um, when we got the assignment for this. So that was kind of my like new way to experience it. And I really freaking love the audiobook. Really, really solid. And yeah, so it was cool to so this was my first time watching Jaws after having, you know, read the book, which was a cool experience. So yeah, I'm excited to see what everybody has to say about it. Nice. Um well fun fact that Amanda just pointed out to me is this movie was released on my birthday. But 17 years before I was born. So (laughs) I kind of missed out on the theater experience. Um, But I had seen little, like, snippets on TV. And I was talking to Amanda about this a couple weeks ago and realized I had never actually sat down and, like, watched it. I had only seen it on TV. And so I had seen quite a bit of it. But I never really, like, sat down with the intention of, like, figuring out what this movie was. So not technically a first watch for me but pretty close to it Hmm. interesting 
Now, in in all of those times that you had seen it kind of incidentally, because I feel like a lot of people have probably seen this movie incidentally, because mm-hmm. Amanda, like you said, this is a big summer movie, and it's I feel like Michigan Theater shows it almost every summer. I know I've gone and seen it at the Michigan Theater, and I remember seeing some re-release of it at um, what used to be Showcase. What the hell is it called now? It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, Cinemark. Cinemark. Yeah. It's, yeah. That or didn't it play at, like, Summerfest one year? At top I'm, of the, at top of the I'm park? I'm sure. Yeah. And Maybe I saw it there. Yeah. But it's just a movie that a lot of people will see kind of incidentally. What did you think of it when you would, when you would see little bits of it? Yeah. Um... I'm. This is not my favorite movie. I'll just say that right off the bat. Um, but it was funny because when I was paying attention to it this time, I liked it a lot more because you like when you're just watching snippets of it, it's really hard to figure out who the characters are. So to me, it was like three boys in a boat. I don't know <laughs> what they're doing, but like they're they're, they're getting the shark. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But you know, watching it from the beginning, it's like, oh, I don't remember what Brody's title is, but there's Brody and then there's the science guy and then there's like the everyday man's man whatever that guy's name is it fleshes out the characters a little bit more sure. then you can see opposing viewpoints and like get more of the actual story so that was a pretty interesting um little thing i happened yeah. upon yeah i think just like alien for jaws it's the characters that make this movie mm-hmm. totally uh and the filmmaking, but we're we're going to talk about all mm-hmm. that, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, even some of the smaller characters in the movie, all of like the town and the people on the beach and the p- other like people on the boat trying to find the shark, they were all. It was bit parts, but they all just had such like quirky and interesting like things about them that just made it even like quirkier and homier and weirder and more fun. This, this movie more is teeming with life <laughs> in like a in like a. Mostly a hilarious way, I think. And I have that a lot in my notes. I, like, I mostly was pointing out little bit characters that pop up and say something funny or, but we, we'll, we'll get to that as we do the, mm-hmm. as we do the deep dive. Before we do that, does anybody have anything else that they wanted to say? Yes. I just wanted to say, this is also a movie that I consider my birthday movie. What? Christopher, your birthday is July 30th. Yes. (laughs) And what happened on July 30th? Not, but it's it's different in the movie, but the real event on July 30th. Oh, the USS Indianapolis? That's right. Oh, Oh, really? Interesting. So. I looked that up because I was like, no way. All these people got eaten by a shark. Yeah. Most people did not get eaten by a shark. Right. So that was a little disappointing. It's like there were right. sharks. <laughs> but the, it is the ocean. The real problem was the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real danger. This movie did give a bad name, an extra bad name to sharks for a very, very long time. I've since learned because of Shark Week and things like that. Mm-hmm. This um, movie really changed a lot as far as like marine biology and shark and water and it, it definitely had an impact on that industry and people's thoughts about the water. Yeah, for sure. During an evening beach party on the New England coast, Chrissy Watkins catches the eye of partygoer Tom Cassidy and leads him away from the group to go skinny dipping in the ocean. Tom, who is quite drunk, passes out on the sand before he can even undress, but Chrissy, undeterred, strips down and dives into the surf. As Chrissy swims further from the shoreline, she pauses to tread water. An unseen creature notices Chrissy's paddling legs from beneath the surface and begins to approach. Chrissy is quickly attacked by the creature, which grabs a hold of her leg and after a violent struggle, drags her under the waves. Her screams for help go unheard and eerie silence follows her submergence. The next morning, we see the surrounding town of Amity preparing for the upcoming Independence Day weekend. Martin Brody, Amity's chief of police, receives a call at home regarding Chrissy Watkins' disappearance. His deputy, Jeff Hendricks, soon stumbles upon the segmented remains of Chrissy washed up on the shore and being feasted upon by little crabs. <laughs> Back at the police station, Brody receives a call from the coroner who determines that Chrissy Watkins was the victim of a shark attack. Fearing for the safety of Amity's many swimmers, Brody immediately prepares to close the beaches until further investigations can be made. His intentions are quickly noticed by Mayor Larry Vaughn, who, fearing for income loss that would result from closing the beach at such a pivotal point in the summer, attempts to convince Brody that a change in Chrissy's official cause of death to mutilation by boat propeller, which is dumb. (laughs) Brody remains dedicated to the safety of Amity's citizens and tourists, regardless of the financial toll the town may endure. However, Vaughn forbids him to close the beaches just yet. 
So I love this opening sequence. Even though something horrific happens, this movie really makes me long for vacations and summer mm -hmm. vacations in a big, big way. The water during the sequence when they're out getting ready to go skinny dipping almost has like a sparkling quality to it. Um, and I, th something that cracks me up is like the drunk guy kind of like psyching himself up as he's going <laughs> along yes. is something that like, I absolutely have done in my life. I'm like, you can do this, man. You 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 can make it up these stairs, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chrissy's left him in the fucking dust. Yeah, He's oh, like yeah. 50 yeah. meters ahead of him. <laughs> and like, yeah, the like party that's happening by a fire on the beach where some mm -hmm. asshole's playing his guitar, like is, is such a classic thing. And it's done really well here. And um, I just immediately just love this opening sequence. I agree. You you already feel like you're in the hands of a really, really good filmmaker. A couple scenes really stood out to me right away from the beginning of the movie. Brody, so it, it's also real. Brody answers the wrong phone at first, and then he gets the right phone. That's Meanwhile, right. his wife is having a conversation in the background <laughs> about something. I can't even remember now. And then when Brody's on the phone at his office, you see him at the typewriter. The camera zooms in on the form that he's got to type mm -hmm. out, and he types S-H-A-R, gay, attack. Mm -hmm. And it's so such a great scene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because no you haven't seen the shark. No one's even said the word shark, and he's just there, boom, 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 shark attack. Mm -hmm. Very effective. Yeah. I, too, and especially with the, the way the slow and fast – way the movie opens up with just the water you're instantly sucked in you're underground it's it's scary you don't but you feel that the, the largeness the presence of the shark and you feel that throughout the movie but to start us off right at the beginning like no wonder it freaked people out in the theaters because you know that was definitely new well and her screams oh. and stuff while that's happening are tough they're horrifying yeah. like it it's like you know, watching the making of stuff like how they did it, where they were essentially pouring water down her throat while she was laying back. It's like mm -hmm. it, it knowing that is kind of goofy, and now I can hear it. But like it, that scene looks great. Yeah. However, they were jerking her around, her going under, and yeah. and that eerie silence is just. Yeah. It rocks. Well, they hired um, a stunt. They wanted a stunt person for it so that they would have that theatrical kind of motion. And there were like five people on each side that were kind of pulling her around. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 awesome because there's no blood there's no blood there's no shark but you're like you're scared to death because of what just happened to this girl yeah yeah that was one thing I was kind of wondering about is how they filmed the shark kind of jerking her around on the top of the water um, and I was thinking about it a lot because I don't know if it was last Halloween or the Halloween before but. Um, I watched Creature from the Black Lagoon from the fifties yeah and was really impressed like. It's the 50s. How do you get a camera underwater? How do you, like, move it around the way that you want to? I had the same thought here where I'm like, they probably filmed uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon on a universal backlot. How do they do this in the ocean, the actual ocean? You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's above water, I totally get that. You put it on some sort of barge or boat or something. Underwater, it's like you have three scuba guys down there. Like, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> I have no idea how they how they made that work. Movie magic. I have something to say about that. I have been to both uh, attractions featuring Jaws at Universal <laughs> Studios, and they lied to me there. They told me they have this like really cool like man-made pond lake thing with like a gigantic gray screen behind it. It's probably like 50, 60 feet in the air. Um, and that's how they film a lot of water stuff because you can like control the actual lake itself. And then you have a big background that you can either project or like add something on the back. But they told me they filmed part of Jaws there. But then my research told me that they filmed it all in Martha's Vineyard. So hmm. what was it one of the later Jaws movies? Maybe. I didn't know that there were additional Jaws movies until you guys told me that like last year. Well, Jaws 3 <laughs> is, takes place at SeaWorld. So I don't know. Oh, man. Remember oh, the... when there was a SeaWorld in Ohio? <laughs> Apparently. OK, so the that scene of Chrissy's death was shot in the waters of Cow Beach, which I think is nearby there. So. Wow. So okay. they really did do really that. Really in, in the, the ocean. Man, that is really impressive. Yeah, especially I just knowing all of the did did anybody happen to watch any of the making of stuff about this? Oh man. Well, 
Allison, you should you should make it your business to watch it because it's <laughs> it's just it's interesting across the board, and it's um, it's amazing that this movie happened, especially knowing mm -hmm. now. Steven Spielberg is obviously just like a name that everybody trusts, but that was not not the case. When he was twenty eight. Yeah. Man, yeah. what was I doing? Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, yeah. that that is some dangerous thinking. But, but if you start <laughs> thinking about that, like, yeah, when I was twenty six, twenty eight, what? When I was in high school, as like a film buff and like a wannabe filmmaker, my thing inside my heart and soul was just like <laughs> Steven Spielberg was twenty six when he made Jaws. They actually like <laughs> hung over my head like this cloud. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that while I was watching the making of because not only does he allow some improvisation on the set and some ideas to develop, he's got to rewrite major scenes because of how things are going in yeah. production. You know, there's a part that explains how the uh, scene with the shark cage was filmed in the making of. Oh. So he had to change part of the whole plot of what was happening oh, in the water. Right? I remember that, actually, because there were some uh, special features on the Blu-ray. Yeah. But the guy was not in the cage. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then he had to redo it mm -hmm. so that the guy escaped because originally he yep. was right. super not going and I, to. I had the even, shark get stuck? The shark got all tied up in the cage, which was not a planned thing. That was like footage that was shot by the two shark experts, I think from Australia, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Um, but they made it work. Again, like, are these domesticated sharks like how do no. you get a real shark and you're like we need you to do this yeah. thing and then what does it f just swim off into the ocean do they collect it <laughs> well the, the two filmmakers the two it was a what is a couple from australia they were experienced like working with sharks and they would film they were experienced in filming underwater yeah. and so they hired them to film the underwater scenes with the live sharks just like the background stuff mm -hmm. wow. or when you see like a live shark like it's not the fake shark swimming it's like and then you can do it at different perspectives to make it seem like larger than it was. Like if it was, you know, a 10 or a 15 foot shark, first, then make it seem like it's 25. Right. Oh. Or like when they were filming a scene with um, the cage, they used the cage, but they put like a, sm a smaller cage and a smaller person next to the shark to make it look, it was a real shark, to make it uh, look bigger. Okay. Like a little bit of perspective. So if you're listening right now and you have seen the movie Jaws 100 times and haven't seen the making of, watch the making of. It's really, really interesting, and you really have even more respect for, like, the craft and all the hardships that everybody went through, like, blood, sweat, and tears to, like, make this, like, yeah horrible experience of a filmmaking. And then <laughs> to have that happen, and, like, the movie almost wasn't, it wasn't going to be done. It wasn't going to be finished. And then to have it put out into the universe and have it be, like, this insane, like, cultural event mm -hmm. it's just it just adds a little more i think to the lore especially if you're like oh i've seen jaws i like jaws a lot um there's you're i totally agree with you there's something it and and for the listeners the the documentary is creatively called the making of jaws <laughs> and, and um but it doesn't need to be anything else and it's like it's it, it gives you i mean they talk to everybody that was involved with the production at least that was still alive or willing to talk about mm -hmm. it um and there's there's just so much great information in there and it's just it, and really interesting it's like and i think it's like an hour and a half two hours it's on yeah. the dvd and the blu-ray and i think it's i think it's on youtube even it is um, on youtube it's in it's but it's one of those things where it's in like 16 yeah. parts or something oh, okay. so um so make it your business to to check that dvd out from nice. your local and, I, and that was the first time recently when i watched i watched that for the first time and i was like oh wow yeah uh, a couple other notes i had about that particular chunk um I love the secretary at the police station talking about the kids that were karateing the picket fences. <laughs> uh, also love the old man that just comes in and is complaining about a dead truck that's in front of his store. Um, again, this is the town is just buzzing with all this like Norman Rockwell type mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. And then the other note that I have is uh, the piece of shit mayor. If I would lose my mind if another grown man grabbed me by my elbow to get my attention like he does Brody. But, you know, as awful as this guy is, you, it's it, he's perfect. I love how the town looks. Mm -hmm. It also, of course, reminded me of the Universal Rides. <laughs> but um, it's just like so like idyllic and it, it just has such mm -hmm. a vibe. Um, Small town. And the colors are good. I had never seen. I watched the Blu-ray for this and it looks so crisp. Like yeah. my parents TV from like five years ago, even though it's a great TV, like could not compete with 
how amazing the Blu-ray looked. And they they did a, there's a, another documentary on there about the restoration process that they did oh, really? for transferring mm. it to Blu-ray. Like they worked pretty hard on it. It's always looked good, but that but there is a noticeable difference, especially when it jumped to Blu-ray. I watched the new 4K transfer of it. Ooh. It looks really good, but it's not like dramatically better. Sorry to the people oh. that worked on that, <laughs> but um, but I mean, it's it. You're right. It's a great looking movie. It's it's bright and vivid, and yeah, I I desperately want to visit that town, but I don't think that Martha's Vineyard yeah. is within my price range. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's just perfect. It's exactly what we Michiganders are looking for whenever we escape up north or, or to the west side of the state mm-hmm. to get over to like well, Michigan. Well, like too, like the streets are car, they are streets for cars, but there's just people and bicyclists just, in, I'm like, how are people not getting hit by cars? And it looked like they were like practicing yeah. the parade or something. There's like so <laughs> many pedestrians and just yeah. walking everywhere. I'm like, why is everybody, and that was before the 4th of July when everybody came over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the colors are just fabulous and amazing. And I really love the the beach scenes in particular because of the the richness of the color and the people. And there's just something so gorgeous about it. And when I was watching, I recently was watching Jaws 2 and 3 before this. Um, <laughs> and there are scenes where you're, the the pan shots of the water and of the beach. And in Jaws 2, it's like the same spot where you have the little red and white striped. Mm-hmm. It's, But it just looks and feels, even though it's supposed, it doesn't look and feel different because it is, it's not the same. It just doesn't, it's not captured or like filmed in the same format where you're, there's just something so magical about that that the beach scene at the in the first one that just you can't get to. Yeah, all the summer feels. The <laughs> houses remind me. It's like not exactly the same vibe. But have you guys ever been to Fishtown in Leland? Oh yeah, up north. Yeah. No. What? Oh, man. You guys have never been to Fishtown? No. Oh, it's great in it, Leland Peninsula. It's what? um north of Traverse City. Um, it's small, but it's this really beautiful like um I don't even know what to call it. It's like a little tiny thing where there's a bunch of like um, fishing wooden shacks that are right on the water and there's different kinds of vendors that are in them. Huh. One of them is like cheese curds. Ooh. It's right on the water. It's really small. That looks like the place in Florida I was just at. And then you go up the road. It's probably better. And it has that, what is that restaurant you get the Chubby Mary's at? Oh, I forget (laughs) what it's called. Um, Also, the sandwiches are great up there. If you're going... Get a sandwich. Anyways, okay. It's just it's just something I quaint. do love a good sandwich. It's something <laughs> quaint. And you can walk around around the corner down the road and you're at like you're at the beach. Fish town. It's fish called town. it's literally called fish town. <laughs> I thought you guys were just making shit up. No. Fish there's also town. a fish town in Philly. Huh. Very different vibe. Yeah. <laughs> in the summer Maybe they'll do like I was they'll do like pop up craft it. vendors and stuff. But yeah, looking at the other stuff that the cinematographer shot, it does make sense that it's so bright and vivid it's like he, this this guy did grease rocky oh. two through four really child's play the what? sting two no the sting two the conversation uh the omen two lots of sequels hmm. but um one flew over the cuckoo's nest wow uh beethoven's second <laughs> is that the dog movie uh-huh oh wow. nice 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 one of the best ones he's done anaconda <laughs> flipper Oh, I was. Is it the 1992 six, six version? Six, yeah, that was one of my favorite movies growing up, and um, it also uh, didn't help this whole like shark hate because shark in hate that flipper movie, uh, Hammerhead Shark is like the bad guy. It's like the villain. Man, well, I vaguely animal, remember this. I love that movie. To me, to me, um, Elijah Wood is not a hobbit. He is Sandy from the from Flipper? Flipper remake. <laughs> yes. I had a huge crush on him as a kid, too. Really? Yeah. What about Free Willy? Oh. Never I, seen it. I've, what? Oh, really? <laughs> I saw it in the movies. <laughs> I'm a he Flipper girl. It. At the show. He gets out. <laughs> I love Free Willy. I mean, we Sorry freaking, to the was... podcast listeners who didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but he makes it. <laughs> it's like on and the then he cover. Dies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the last shot is on the cover. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Free Willy. Oh, and Michael Madsen's in. The- anyway, wow. Has any, any of you guys seen Free Willy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Many no. times. I, okay. I like, or probably around the same time I would have Was seen. Was that Jaws. Come out like a ninety four? Ninety three. Yeah, yeah. We saw that in the show. We were obsessed with it. I have a distinct memory of sitting and watching that with my dad and eating white fudge Oreos. <laughs> the Michael Jackson song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Oh man. My dad used to play the little video for it. 
What the hell is that song called? Dun, dun, friend. Will you be there? Is that da, it? Da, 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 da. Yes. It's also on um, the two disc history, history. collection. Yes. Yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. Which I had. Same. My parents had it. It's one of the like 10 CDs they had. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like me to sing any song off of it, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, after you watch Jaws, everybody, please watch Flipper from 1996. <laughs> I might have Paul to. Paul Hogan. Yeah. What? Sandy's got to go live Crocodile with his. Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Heck yeah. Dude, he's, yeah, he scared me. I have kid. seen that because he's like the uncle, right? Yeah. Oh, I've seen that one. Okay. Yeah, he catches Sandy smoking a cigarette or something, then he makes him smoke a whole pack. I was like, <laughs> shit, this guy means business. <laughs> <laughs> He did mean yeah. business. <laughs> I love that movie. Like, I'm not afraid of whales, but I'm afraid of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> they also feed Flipper Jello when he's sick. Oh, and that helps him? It's like they make Jello cubes with little pieces of fish or something Aww. for nutrients. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if that's um, scientifically sound, but I will always want to feed a let's, dolphin Let's jello. feed a dolphin Jello and see what happens. Probably nothing good. <laughs> Can dolphins get diabetes? Although I guess there's maybe not that much sugar in Jello. Anyway, <laughs> they have sugar-free. You can make yeah, it work. exactly. So we, yeah, that's how you work around that. You do a sugar-free <laughs> Jello for the dolphins. Anyway, right. yeah, flipper. Classic. Anyway, you're Watch you're it. listening to a podcast about Jaws. <laughs> well, five minutes of the movie has gone by. <laughs> that's true. It's true. Oh, shark I have attack. One more note, please. Um, the scene where they find her hand. Love it. Yeah. Her hand looks nasty. I love that it's a real person. Mm -hmm. And I know it's serious, but I find it so funny that the cop is just like pushing sand around on the ground after he finds her. Like, I, I what? I I like it. It's like a <laughs> it it's a it's definitely a very actorly thing to do. <laughs> um but it works. You know, I think it works. Yeah. I was disturbed whether that was the same hand that he had his whistle in. What is he? You know, he's blowing on the whistle. Oh, and then it looks like he takes it out of his mouth, and then he's moving the sand around with that same hand. He's just filling his whistle with sand. With sand, Ooh. with nasty, nasty beach sand. Mm, salty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking <laughs> in that scene. And I'm like, dude, you're wrecking your good whistle. Come on, man. <laughs> you're gonna get your backup whistle. <laughs> These are the important details. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I also hate that he misspells coroner. Come on. It drove me insane. On the death certificate or I whatever. Missed that. I totally missed that. There's no second O. It just says corner or something. Corner. <laughs> oh. oh. Small huh. town. Huh. It's a small cop shop. I clocked that immediately and I was like, what the hell? That's Is that on purpose? Funny. I totally <laughs> missed that. So Brody's an idiot. Yeah. Okay. I hate this man. <laughs> and from New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is his title? Chief his police, police chief. Yeah, chief of police. Mm -hmm. I called him the dad in my notes until like way too late in it. I realized his name was Brody and I had to go back and like. Uh, Martin Brody. I think search. that's okay. Marty, 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 listen here. The I, dad. When I'm taking notes on things like this, I'm switching back and forth with <laughs> names like that. Like bro, the only reason that, that I refer to him as Brody in this is just because I it, it's so burned into my brain. But otherwise, I would have been calling him Guy, Dad, <laughs> Handsome Man. Handsome cop Man. Guy. <laughs> cop Guy, yeah. Tan Man. Handsome Cop. Handsome Tan Man. <laughs> yeah, Handsome Tan Cop Dad. <laughs> he is quite tan. He's yeah. very tan. Especially he gets York. more tan. Ooh. Jaws too. he's even more tan. Oh, yeah, is yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How many of them is he in? Just, just, the, the, just two. the two. Oh, okay. um, which is good. It's like he had a he had a contract with whatever the, with Universal that like started with French Connection, and then he was in Jaws, and he was in Jaws two, and then he was done with that contract. So. Interesting. Okay. Jaws two is okay. It's worth it's worth watching. I think it's, it's not awful. The no, others? it's you know. So I I just watched it, and it it felt like they took Jaws. It looked kind of the same. Mm -hmm. They took Jaws and they just chopped it all up. They they made the same jokes here and there, but it was just so much paler. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was really let down because oh, yeah. it looks so similar to Jaws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a, what is it, two years later? I think it's two years later, yeah. You know, so it has that same old look. It's got some good scenes to it. 
But uh, yeah, just the same jokes. Like there's even a joke about, do you want to get drunk and fool around? Yeah. You know, and it's, so it's just the same hashed stuff that we've already seen. So I was, I was disappointed. Yeah. I mean, as a movie, it's not terrible, but as if you're watching that after you've seen Jaws, you already know a bunch of stuff. It's like seeing when you see something for the first time or do it for the first time, you can't go back and see it for the first time again or do that thing again. Right. And that's sort of like, and a lot of sequels are like that, but I think Jaws is so effective in having that on screen in your face for the first time. So those things are all going to kind of pale in comparison to like experiencing it for the first time, even though it kind of sets you up and now you're comfortable there. There's still plenty of like little jump scares and you don't know how this fish is going to be. Yeah. Um, yep. And now it's like a different, the, his birdies, two kids are involved more. Um, there's, you see what the teens are up to. It's a yeah. popcorn movie. It's yeah. like a, it is a dispensable, like it's a, it's something to do for mm-hmm. about two hours. Yeah. So it didn't, it didn't completely suck if, on my yeah. end. A oh boy, they um, get worse as they it. go. You, did, you didn't need it. I mean, and two, I was thinking about that when I was watching Jaws 2 and 3, because Jaws 3 has two of Brody's kids in it. Um, even though it's not, you're in a different location and everything, like his two kids are there. I was like, wait a minute, why are they with water? Yeah, it's water? like a fake sea world. It's like weird. It's yeah. really weird. Like yeah. when they said Brody, I'm like, oh, that's cool. They use like his name. Then I'm like, Mike Brody. I'm like, wait, the same character is in it? <laughs> this is dumb. The kid that had like three lines in the movie, now he has his own movie. Um, yeah, well, then the little brother's in it, too. Mm-hmm. So Jaws 3, at the beginning of it, it says, it is suggested by the novel Jaws by Peter Benchley. So that was... The- suggested. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was like in the tagline at the beginning. It has really, really bad... I just watched it this morning. It has terrible intro <laughs> graphics. I actually took a video to show you guys because it's so stupid. Um, it's so bad. It's not even, like, good bad. It's, like, ridiculously, like... Anyways, you guys might love it, actually. They couldn't um, even get the dignified, like, inspired no, by, no. suggested by. Suggested by. <laughs> well, number number two had that, but yeah. then three was suggested by the novel. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because it has the same freaking character. I just think it's funny that they were able to use these characters. I don't know. Yeah. It just didn't need it. And I was just concerned about, like, their mental health and wanted to, like, yeah. see how things were going. Not um, good. No, no. <laughs> and we're, and um, if I remember correctly, at the fourth one... We're supposed to believe that that's the a shark, the the offspring of the original shark getting revenge. It's the stupidest fucking. Th- anyway, they they ascribe like thoughts and emotions and feelings to these sharks as they go on, and it's this time it's personal. <laughs> well, that's and that's the one that Michael Caine was a uh, Jaws four. Michael Caine was in that, and he said that he oh, wow. he was able to like buy a house or buy a car because he did it, which is why he did it. Wow. wow. I did I skipped Jaws 4. I think I'm going to continue to skip Jaws 4. That's <laughs> yeah. That's probably why. I will read I, I am going to read the book again though sometime soon. That'll be a summer read for me Jaws for 4, sure. Jaws the book? No, the original Jaws which <laughs> which highly, is sitting in the rec- middle of the table in front of us. Highly right? recommend it. Yeah. It, there are some differences in the movie, so if you've already seen the movie and are curious about the book and you haven't read it yet, it's worth reading it because there are some differences that were kind of fun to explore. Yeah. Spielberg said something like he he thought that all the characters were so unlikable that he was rooting for the shark, mm-hmm. which is which was why he spent a bunch of time trying to make the characters in the movie version much more likable. Yeah. I mean, it was weird since I know the current the movie characters so well. Yeah. So reading it, like when the characters do different things, I'm like, well, that's not his personality. I'm like, no, this is the person. Um, and there's there's bigger. I don't want to say what the differences are for those first time readers who are going to go and read the book after they listen to this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Over the next few days, ferry loads of tourists arrive on Amity stocks. The beaches are crowded each day, and Brody is extremely concerned about more potential attacks. As Brody and his wife Ellen sit in the sand, Brody scans the shoreline for any signs of trouble. Lots of really great shots in that. Mm-hmm. A ways down the beach, young Alex Kittner asks his mother for permission to go swimming, though Mrs. Kittner notes that her son's fingers are starting to prune. <laughs> From the time he has already spent in the water that day, she allows him 10 more minutes. Alex and his yellow raft enter the ocean one last time before being set upon by what is unmistakably an enormous fucking shark. <laughs> Panic ensues on the beach. Mrs. Kittner calls out desperately for her son as the bloodied and shredded remains of his raft wash up in the surf. Alex's grieving mother offers a $3,000 reward to anyone who can catch the shark that killed her son, and a town meeting is held to discuss the official shark problem. Brody announces that they're expanding efforts to keep the beaches safe, as well as bringing in a shark expert from the Oceanographic Institute to assist them. 
Most of the assembled townspeople are more concerned about finances than safety and remain angry about the breaches being closed. The chatter is then quelled by Sam Quint, an eccentric and roughened local fisherman who guarantees the capture and slaughter of the offending shark for the price of $10,000. Though his offer is not accepted at that point, Quint seems confident that the job will fall to him eventually. With Mrs. Kittner's reward made public, scores of amateur shark hunters crowd Amity's docks. Two local men make a clumsy attempt to lure the shark with a holiday pork roast, which results in one of them nearly becoming the shark's third victim. Arriving at the same time as the horde of overconfident fishermen is Matt Hooper, the shark expert from the Oceanographic Institute hired by the Amity police. Hooper is allowed to view the remains of Christy Watkins and assures Brody that Christy did not die in a boating accident, was, was definitely attacked by a shark. The town breathes a sigh of release when the corpse of a large tiger shark is displayed on the docks. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> having, been, having been caught by some of the contending fishermen. Brody is initially elated, believing the nightmare to be over, until Hooper examines the creature's mouth and determines that the bite radius does not match the wounds on Watkins' remains, and therefore is not the shark that they are seeking. Hooper, wanting to be certain, suggests that he examine the contents in the shark's stomach. Brody supports this plan, but Vaughn seems to serve by the notion and disapproves. That's one way to put it. <laughs> the crowd falls silent as Mrs. Kittner arrives, presumably returning from her son's funeral. She approaches Brody and slaps him across the face, furiously accusing him of keeping the beaches open despite having prior knowledge that there was a man-eating shark in the water. Brody, angry and ashamed, becomes all the more determined to prevent further attacks. So a lot happens in there. Um, love the prune fingers assessment. <laughs> um, that was so cute. He's... Because she's just like, let me see your fingers. Yeah. That was like her determination. I was like, oh, <laughs> 70s parenting. You get <laughs> you get in this section what is hands down the saddest part of the movie. Mm -hmm. No question. And what is it, Allison? Oh, I, I feel like you want me to say Alex Kintner, but there, no. there's some dogs. There's a dog. There's some dogs all yeah. over the place, and I was very upset. Tip it. You see that dog? <laughs> Do you see that stick floating in the water? <laughs> yeah. I, I they don't really focus on it, though. I didn't notice that until, like, a couple of years ago for the first time that it's like, oh, the dog got missing. Oh, no. Fucking hate this shark. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I didn't I didn't pick up on that. There's like four or five good dogs in this. And every single time I saw one, I was like, uh. A poor dog on the like chumming boat. There's like, there's like, Jesus two, there's Christ two trying to hold on for dear life. <laughs> there's two dogs, like six guys on that tiny little boat. So dumb. Why'd they even take it? What's it going to do out there? I know. It'll Again, see it was it. just these it's colorful dark. things happening around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the beach scene, I love the that tranquil beach scene. Not tranquil, it's kind of like bustling. But the shots of the water and the beach, it's quiet. There's just the hustle and bustle of beach life. You yeah. know something's going to happen. You're just waiting and calm. Is there a shark? Is there going to be an attack? And then little Sean Brody is singing, do you know the Muffin Man? And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, my right. God. It, that, I love that. It's I like a real vacation. So like mm -hmm. It feels like you're on vacation up north somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's which is what I mean. Like this movie makes me want to go on vacation because mm -hmm. it's like the the like the hum of somebody. In this case, it would have been a transistor radio. Now it'd be like somebody's Bluetooth speaker off in the distance playing like you know some soft rock shit. And like I love during this as he's scanning the horizon, looking out at the water. There's the like they do those wipes that are supposed to look like somebody crossing in front of you. Those are super super cool. All the little fake outs, like the old man swimming, um, with the, I think that's Harry, right? That's where that's where the that's oh, some with some bad, bad hat, hat. Harry. Yeah. That drove me insane until I figured out what that was from. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah. It's great. Um, there's also there's a there's a thing that happens. You see this happen a couple of times in this movie to Brody, but there's that there's that other guy on the beach that's like trying to get him to make like a red zone in front of his business or something. It's like an, an annoying little thing where he's like, it's just a simple thing that you can take care of for me. <laughs> he's talking about that zoning and you feel just like you're Brody. You're, you're so <laughs> focused on something else. And this guy's just saying these words are spilling out of his mouth. And yeah. you're like, Oh my God, I just got to keep scanning the beach. I forget mm -hmm. what that type of shot is where he's actually like in the foreground. He's up really, really close, but the focus is on the water behind yeah. him. De Palma does it in a lot of his stuff. It's like, there's a bunch of those in the movie Carrie. Uh -huh. Um, but it's great. And you're just looking at that guy's stupid fucking face as he's, <laughs> yeah. as he's asking for something that he doesn't. Yeah, I'm like, get out of the way. we got to yeah. watch the water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they also have that great um, dolly zoom when he actually notices the shark. The best. I love mm -hmm. that. The best. Mm -hmm. The Hitchcock thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's the it's the coolest, and every time I see it, I go, wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Well, they um they had Tommy Atkins. They did that shot with Tommy Atkins on the beach in the Night of the <laughs> That's Creeps, right. and that was totally a play on <laughs> this right. on purpose. It's yeah. a play on this scene, which, yeah. Wow, I never would have put that together. I yeah I, I I yeah. With him sitting in the white suit with a coconut, <laughs> yeah, it's like the same <laughs> shot. Um. <laughs> Let's see. During this section, we also get um, there's that incredible string of nonsense that the that one of the f- um, fishermen guys lets out. Where's why do we get them silly bastards down on that rock pile? There'll be some fun. They'll wish their fathers had met their mothers and we're digging around the bottom for slamming the rocks. Them boy, do you remember what I'm oh, talking about? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I love that yeah. whole spiel. It's the be- and I'm sure that that wasn't scripted. Oh my god. There, uh, well, there's no way it can be. You missed one of my favorite short little shots, nobody's even talking in this, where weird little Cappy comes out of the harbor master office. He's just oh. got this shit-eating grin on his face, carrying a bunch of crackers and milk. And it's like, what, what in the hell is this guy doing here? He just comes out smiling, holding his groceries from the harbor master office. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm trying about? to remember no. what you're talking about. It's the first time we see the harbor master office, and and that's where everything's taking oh, place on I, the dock. Yeah. And so I'm watching it with my daughter. She's not paying any attention to that. She says, oh, my God, look at that Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Mustang way in the back oh of the my shot. God. And I'm like, oh, my God. Man, you should be part of this podcast because I'm missing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, crackers and milk is like the perfect beach snack. Yeah. Sure. On well, a hot just... day, I love a big glass of milk. Oh, he's vomit. this old guy wearing a little captain's cap. I don't remember cap. that at all. Well, there's things from this. The holiday roast thing really cracks me up. Um, that well, scene. Sue, do, uh, we met Quint, right? We did. We did have the meeting where he and he did the the nails on the chalkboard Ugh. thing. Like we were introduced to him. Okay. I love how he calls it a bad fish. Mm-hmm. He's just a little naughty. <laughs> <laughs> we're also introduced to Richard Dreyfus at this point, who I am just kind of annoyed by for the entire movie. But you need him. Um, you like need his character to make it all work. Yeah. Um, oh, you're you guys are annoyed by him. Yeah, oh, I I like him. Yeah, yeah. I think he's supposed, to, and he's very different in the book. But I think he's supposed to be kind of annoying and persnickety, and kind of like know it ally and like yeah, funny and silly. Well, <laughs> he's also doing some other stuff in the book, right? Right. Yeah, isn't, the book isn't is there, totally there's different. like an affair. Isn't yeah, there? he's a completely yeah. different person in With the book. Brody's wife. Yeah. Right. Woof. Weird. Yeah. Oh, I miss that. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a thing in the the behind the scenes thing where they're talking to the to the actress that played Brody's wife, and she was just like, "I'm really disappointed that they didn't do that. I would have had a love scene with Richard Dreyfuss." <laughs> that would have been so stupid. I couldn't tell if she was being funny or if she was, or if like was he a sex symbol back Little then? Little Ricky Dreyfuss. He, he yeah. Might, <laughs> he might have been. I don't. Yeah. I. It's hard to say. Um, and this is also where we get the the tiger shark definition and the oh what just, <laughs> it just i just that'll never stop being funny to me they still have that shark at um universal studios florida they ripped out the entire ride but they kept they have like a 15 or 20 foot like shark installation that they still oh that's kept. cool yeah wow. cool. but no more jaws thing at universal florida no it Bummer. um they tore it down to make part of the like harry potter oh. world Okay, but yeah. um, the ride at Florida was way better than. There's just like a scene on the tram tour in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but for people who know Disney stuff, it, it was basically the Jungle Cruise, but like through Amity, and then the shark <sighs> is following you the whole time. And at the end, it like tries to eat your boat, and there's like pyrotechnics that like just about burn your fucking eyebrows off. That rules. Yeah, and they um they like uh there's some electric thing. And so the electric thing falls in the water and the shark is electrified. Hmm. And then like you see it like flip over and it's like smoking. Like the the shark animatronic. Cool. Anyway, that doesn't exist anymore. That's too Only bad. in my memory. <laughs> <laughs> and on YouTube. <laughs> um uh the mayor looked so familiar to me and I couldn't figure out why, because I don't know any of these other actors, but he is um Father Ryan in the original Amityville horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought I would have another fun fact here because I thought that they named Amity after that, but that is happening concurrently with this movie coming out. Mm. Like the Ronnie 
DeFeo murders are like the year before, and wow. then like uh, the family hmm. moving in is 1975. Interesting. As well. Just some you know casual horror movies featuring friendship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the mayor is also Mr. Death in an episode of The Twilight Zone. Oh. Apparently, that guy that plays the mayor, I forget the actor's name right now, he was the only... Murray Hamilton. Murray Hamilton. <laughs> uh, he was the only like first choice of Spielberg's that he got. In terms really? Of, yeah. He was like the first person cast, and uh, I, I think it was the right choice. Yeah, That's he's cool. he's one of my favorites. I mean, he's just so awesome in every single scene. He just nails it. Mm-hmm. He, you even get I know that we're this is jumping ahead just a little bit, but like you get a little bit like you hate him and then you get that scene at the hospital mm-hmm. where you do feel for him just a mm-hmm. little bit. Like you you're you're able to see a little bit of his humanity there. It's mm-hmm. no longer just like we're trying to make money on being a, you know, a vacation destination. Yeah, I mean you- Plus, I love how he has like his colorful suit jackets on with his ties, yeah. and then he's just like super tan. And then he starts, but he, in the hospital, he just starts sweating, and you do get that sense of like, oh man. And you can see him in that moment. He's like workshopping essentially mm-hmm. a press release. It's it's yeah. it's good stuff. It's, it's a yeah. Well, then his kid shows up. What is it in Jaws two? Yeah, Jaws two. His kids. His teenage son is on the boat with um, Brody's son. Hmm. So his kids on there everyone in this town is dumb as fuck like didn't yeah. you guys just watch this kid get ripped apart why do you want to go back on the beach like why are you guys so mad that we're closing Money. down the beach it's so some, it's summer you can and the police the and the mayor didn't tell us not to which means it's right. safe that is yeah right right i hate it in this sequence though i do love that little town meeting and meeting quentin for the first time and just hear him with his whole you get introduced to him in a really cool way where you kind of get what that guy's all about yeah, and yeah. you know he's no nonsense, no bullshit. He's just gonna go and do the thing, and yeah, good this, stuff. Meeting Quint, he's such a son of a bitch. You don't love Quint? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> he's like my least favorite. I don't know. I I get it. He's so eccentric, and he's a loner, and he just like he's so good. Like when they're on the boat late later when they're trying to catch the oh. shark, and he's strapping into the chair. He's just such a good. He's really good at his job. Yeah, yeah. but he's so bizarre and. He, what does he need? Like, he needs a case of, of brandy. A case of brandy. And, and he's just. <laughs> yeah. God, he, he, we'll, we'll get to the, yeah. in the next chunk, we'll get to the, like, the, the real good Quinn stuff. But I thought it was like a good little introduction with his little, um, di- his monologue, so to speak, at the meeting. Yeah. And the, yeah, the nails on the chalkboard mm-hmm. really are like a great character thing. <laughs> yes. So that's his character. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I feel the same way. <laughs> Just this man has nails on a chalkboard to me. The whole movie. Yeah. And like reading some of what he was like on set. I oh, was he was like, a, uh, he was an alcoholic and he was like a, an impossible guy to deal with. And, and the tension between him and Richard Dreyfuss was real. Cause yeah. they were like, yeah. actually I'm going to skip ahead to one of those little anecdotes. Cause I found one about apparently. So Robert Shaw bullied, Richard Dreyfus for much of the shoot, offering him $1,000 to climb the 70-foot mass of the boat and jump into the ocean. And when he wouldn't do it, he kept calling him a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. yeah. Hate it. Yep. He also died like three years after making this. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. I suspect he really was drinking that ca- those cases of brandy. Yeah. But yeah, all this together did not make me the biggest Quint fan. I also got really bummed out because... Again, I was so sure I was going to make a sweet connection. I was like, Quint, uh, what is it? Taming, no, not Taming the Moon. Um, Turning of the Screw. Oh, there's got to be a connect. No, these characters have absolutely nothing to do with each other. <laughs> so for like an hour, I was like, ah, there's got to be something here. No, there wasn't. I just hate this man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not, you're not alone in that. Um, <laughs> but an amazing Cocker Spaniel in this little couple scenes that's true i think it, it's one of spielberg's dogs oh uh, yeah because spielberg's dog was in this movie and i think it's brody's been dog a, yeah, his yeah his real name is elmer yeah <laughs> yep there were a couple really small bits in this chunk of the movie that i just loved when 
Brody is inside the harbor master house and he wants to get the attention of his deputy. He picks up oh, those yeah. little rocks and he throws them at the window. <laughs> to get, and the, yeah. the deputy just waves. I back. love that. Hello. Hey. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and then the mayor says, "I'm not going to stand here and watch you cut open this shark and that little Kittner boy spill out all uh, over the dock." Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, fair. Yeah. <clears throat> totally. I. It's. Yeah, and then uh, and then immediately we're we're treated to the um, his mom confronting Brody is great. Apparently that took like eighteen takes, and like on the eighteenth take she had to actually slap him because she was holding back, and it was like it just wasn't working out. So that's a real slap, and apparently it was extremely painful. Um, <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a good scene. And just her entrance, like in the all black, she just like slowly mm-hmm. walks up to him, just like oh. Oh yeah, everybody God. stops dead when they see her, and whoever the guy, the old man is that's with her, I don't know who that's supposed to be. It doesn't matter. She's like, my hands aren't pruny at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. So, oh, sorry, I have two more things. Please, yeah. Um, one. Brody's got such a nice house. Oh, Ooh, fuck. I windows. forgot to mention that. Oh, my God. That view when he's sitting behind him, like, they're right on the damn beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only the best for this man. Only, the, Yeah. I mean, every shot that we get of his house, like when he's leaving in the very cool police jeep early, it's like, yeah, he, he's he got a prime spot there. I don't know if they, like, was that included in the, in the like, job offer where they, they sweeten the, the deal with, gets. like, a, the Chief's best house. house in Amity? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that view. I specifically, I think I, yeah, the view out of the Brody's house. Va, va, voom. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also where we get the want to get drunk and fool around line, which was improvised. Yeah. But I love that he just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After he's reading like books with yeah. shark deaths and. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was my other thing. Yeah, those <laughs> shark, uh, those photos of real shark attacks. Ooh, spookiest oh, yeah. part of the movie. That's a make. really cool way to bring information into the movie or to instill more fear in the view. Viewer, even though we haven't seen a lot of stuff yet, yeah. You know? yeah Michael, get out of the yeah. boat now! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they all. Some of the actors have really funny lines. Yeah. One of the kids is like just a little longer. Yeah. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> We're just sitting on the boat, tied to the pier. <laughs> like it's it's good it's good kid bargaining where it's just like they're just repeating what they're exactly what they're doing. They're not like, oh. Mm-hmm. Where is that here? I'm just standing oh, here. Come on, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm looking at it like, oh, my God, he's so small. But I was so small. Like, that is a fucking snack. Yeah. It's not even like a, ugh. Yeah. Well, the little one, like, Sean, he looks, what is he, five tops? He's a oh, little dude. they're little kids, yeah. They're like five and eight or yeah. something, four and eight. Something like that. I'm guessing. Yeah. But do you know the muffin man? <laughs> <laughs> All right. While Brody attempts to unwind at home with his wife and children, Hooper stops by to discuss the shark situation. He believes that the culprit is not a tiger shark but a great white, and that unless it is stopped, it will likely remain in Amity's waters until its food source is depleted. Hooper and Brody decide to examine the shark's stomach contents themselves, regardless of Mayor Vaughn's opinions. The men visit the deserted docks at night and locate the dead tiger shark. Hooper slices its belly open only to find some bisected fish, several tin cans, and a Louisiana license plate, leading him to theorize that the shark made its way up from the Atlantic coast (laughs) from the Gulf of Mexico. Hooper convinces Brody to continue their investigation, but this time out on the water. Using sonar equipment, Hooper locates a large object a good distance away from the shoreline. Brody recognizes it as the boat of Ben Gardner, a local fisherman, the guy that had the incredible string of nonsense earlier. Hooper decides to investigate the half-submerged craft. Hooper discovers a large hole in the hull of the boat and finds an enormous tooth embedded in its side. While examining the tooth, he is suddenly horrified to see the corpse of Ben Gardner floating out of the hull, one of his eyes missing. Hooper drops the tooth like a clumsy idiot in his flashlight (laughs) and rushes to the surface. Then Brody and Hooper make yet another attempt to reason with the mayor, hoping that their latest discoveries will make a difference. Vaughn insists that even with the evidence of Ben Gardner's ravaged boat, there is no proof that a shark is responsible. Hooper explains that he pulled the tooth of the great white shark out of the hull, 
but Vaughn merely rebuffs him once again because Hooper cannot produce the tooth. Though he allows Brody and Hooper to take precautions to keep the beaches safe, he refuses to close them. Independence Day weekend finally arrives, bringing plenty of tourists, but the beachgoers are made uneasy by the numerous police boats patrolling the water for a shark. Vaughn is concerned that no one is swimming and asks a personal friend in attendance to enter the water along with his wife and grandchildren to put everyone's minds at ease. The man and his family reluctantly and warily obey, and others begin to relax and follow suit. Brody is meanwhile aiding with shark patrol. When his elder son Michael wishes to take the new sailboat out into the water with his friends, Brody asks him to take it into the adjacent estuary just to be safe. In the meantime, a dorsal fin appears among the swimmers in the main water and panic erupts. The crowd scrambles back onto the beach and the police boats close in, only to discover that the shark is merely a cardboard fin wielded by two young pranksters in snorkel gear. Very funny scene. <laughs> A young woman sees the unmistakable form of a huge shark making its way into the estuary where Michael and his friends are sailing. Brody goes to investigate. Michael and his friends are approached by a man in a rowboat when the vessels both are suddenly capsized by the shark. The startled sailors surface, and Michael watches in paralyzed horror as the man fails to reach his rowboat before the shark rips him apart. Michael and his friends are brought safely to shore, though Michael is taken to the hospital to be treated for shock. Brody confronts Vaughn once again and puts his foot down, demanding that real action be taken to deal with the shark. Vaughn, for once, is vulnerable and shaken, realizing that his own children were on the beach that day as well. He finally relents and gives Brody full permission to close the beaches and do all that is necessary to stop the shark. Sam Quint is immediately hired. So the scene that happens immediately after, the, like the mimicry thing that happens with Brody and his son is so sweet and apparently was kind of captured off the cuff like they while they were setting up the camera they noticed the kid was doing it and roy scheider apparently like went over to spielberg was like hey turn your camera on and watch watch what's happening so like when they're doing the milk thing and the hand gestures like that was all kind of like that wasn't scripted huh which is really cool um the music in that part is really soothing too it's pretty classic john williams like melancholy stuff and there's like the whole tone of this following exact what we had just seen, it like molds the sadness and sharpness of that last scene into something kind of melancholy and soft. Mm -hmm. um, nobody can do that like Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's something about, and this is true of, of most of his movies that involve kids. He's, he has like an ability to get these great performances out of kids in this very real thing that it just, I don't know. Nobody else can do it quite like him. It's just so real. Yeah. You know, he leans in and says, give us a kiss. And, you know, his ability to capture these real moments between people is fantastic in this movie. The way that he says, because I need it, it's like you you believe him. Mm -hmm. Like, it, that, that's like a, that's a very well delivered line. It's like, it's, it's just kind of perfect. And two, I feel like this scene is happening after a horrible day at work. Things are getting, things are not good. And here he is at home, out of work with his family. And there's this little tender moment of, okay, there is life outside of work. Yeah. You know, I am loved and I will be loved, you know? Yeah. That being said, would you let your kid back in the water the next day? No. <laughs> I also love when they start seeing the shark, everybody in the water just sort of backs away slowly. Yeah. Like, yeah. hold on, I might get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is a, that's a really good scene, though, when, like, they're in the pond. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. You're, it's horrible because you're running along the side of the beach with them trying to get to see where they are. But that one little girl who keeps saying, the shark in the pond. I can't yeah. I can't take it. I don't like that part. Yeah. I, not that it, because I just don't think it's a good voice. I don't think the way she's saying it is very good. She's oh. just like, shark, hip hop. It doesn't sound scary enough to me. Apparently she was like a local, like like she's not oh, an actor. Sorry, no, no, it's, I mean, it's, but like. <laughs> she just doesn't sound, it sounds really fake scared to me. It doesn't sound real. Yeah, I mean. It's my one. Uh, she was like a local artist <laughs> One negative thing. I can't remember what I oh, read. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah she God, just was like yeah. somebody that that got paid the like the $64 stipend <laughs> that everybody did that day to like. Just be scared on the beach. But, like, she actually got lines. I identified with her as someone who's very quiet, even <laughs> when they don't want to be. Just, like, that, that would be me on the side, like, hey, guys, there's a shark. Can anybody hear me? Shark, and people are getting, plant. like, eaten in front of me. <laughs> guys, watch out! <laughs> when it's discovered that the the first dorsal fin that you see is just those two kids, that kid <laughs> that immediately goes, he made me do it. Oh, yeah. that, that is such a big laugh. <laughs> 
Oh, this was a little bit earlier, but another line that made me laugh was, okay, is Hooper the third guy? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm yeah. just realizing Richard this Dreyfus. Now. Yeah, Richard Dreyfus. I thought I knew who Richard Dreyfus was, and I don't recognize a single other thing he's in. What about Bob? Okay. Close Encounters of the Third Kind? American Graffiti? I've seen Close <laughs> Encounters, but I would never be like, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's the voice in Stand By Me. I've never seen Oh, that. that's right. Oh, yeah. It's great. You've never seen Stand By Me. I was it's born great. in 1990. Allison, you have seen like 7,000 <laughs> discs exist. Movies. <laughs> also, I'm just like, also, I'm doubly shocked just because of like the Stephen King connection. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's terrific. It, it is, is one of my favorite movies of all time. I could reenact the movie for you right now. I think we all three could. There's an it's argument so to be made that it's the best Stephen King adaptation. Oh, it, I think it hands down. Hands down and, is. And like, yeah, it's, yeah. I, it's terrific. I, it's yeah. so good. You you love it. It's great. It's 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 super great. Um, also, Richard Dreyfus at narrating. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know who this man is. I yeah. didn't even know he was named Hooper until this very moment. I yeah. Anyway, he's the cool. one that says, it's "Ha, cool. they're all gonna die." Love it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> they're all gonna die. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. Also. Is this where those two guys like are on the dock and the dock gets dislodged? No, that was earlier with the roast, the holiday uh, roast. Okay. But, but yeah, what about it? Um, if I was on that fucking dock, I would be jumping off and swimming back way sooner. Why on earth would He's you just wait? Riding until- it out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're morons. He, like, stands up, starts like, surfing. Oh man. <laughs> Man. Astrid yeah. said the exact same thing. Oh yeah. Like, what sense does this make? Yeah. But that scene is like the barrel scene in that we see the shark without seeing the shark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And man, that's so cool. Yeah. You yeah. know, it may be because they had so much trouble with the shark, but here's a way to show this tension and it's like all we see is the dock moving and then the dock mm-hmm. stops. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So awesome. Yeah. What a great cool. touch. Yeah. yeah. And there's is it here where there's like a boat and the shark obviously sort of like knocks it sideways as it comes by do you know what i'm talking about that's l- uh in there? the estuary i have no idea i don't even know what an estuary is that's like the little <laughs> pond where the kids have to go take their boat ah uh, um i don't remember there's something like that and it, again you don't see the shark at all you just see the boat turn and you're like oh shit it just yeah. like it's coming right um also i know this is in the last part again sure. too but um that guy's head coming out of the hole so nasty. That was the one part that really like startled me watching yeah. this. And that was um, that was done after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like there's a, there's a anecdote about like during a preview screening, um, Spielberg loved that everybody jumped at that like the scene where Brody is out on the boat chumming the waters. Like everybody jumped at the shark coming out. Ah. He quote unquote got greedy and wanted another one of those. And so they, but universal wasn't willing to give them money to, to reshoot that scene. So they shot it in a pool (laughs) at like some other executive's house for like $3,000 of his own money to add that, like the gross eye scene. Yeah. And it worked. It's effective. Yeah. It's very awesome. I would, I, I don't remember if they talked about how they made whatever the sound is that like that, that, happens to make you jump but it's a it's good and it's effective and it's like somebody else like behind the mask yeah god it's good good shit um the the scene we're actually talking about right now Mm. uh, the underwater blood like Mm -hmm. clouds look so good every time they do it it's like oh that's a lot of blood each time you yeah each time that like somebody gets ripped apart by the shark like when the kid first like the first kid gets ripped well i guess it's the second shark victim at that point anyway the kid on the yellow raft there's so much blood it's, it's a scene how much there is and then um until it hits the bottom the leg prop looks great and then it hits the bottom and it's like, yeah. <laughs> like it wiggles the, a whole bunch but there's a hand earlier too mm-hmm. it's like yeah this hand is made out of rubber or yeah. something it's terrible. nice too that that's <laughs> It's a shorter scene, though. So the scene in the estuary where the guy gets his like he gets eaten and his leg falls off and all that, like that scene was apparently supposed to be a little bit longer, and he was supposed to show a whole lot more blood and gore of him being dragged through the water. Mm-hmm. To but like, but Spielberg thought that it was too much, 
Don't need to show more yeah, than that. He said and, it was too gory. And cutting a few frames from it meant that they could go from being rated R to rated PG, which is wild. Wow. It's wild to me that this movie's rated PG. That's insane. Um, rated R for smoking. But yeah, that, that whole scene is is just awesome. Like it has um it's like our first real good look at the size of the shark. Um mm-hmm. the like the terrified looks on everybody's faces, the neat music choices, like when when the shark goes under the water, the music fully stops, uh-huh. which is uh, just like, ugh, anyway, that's, it's perfect. It's such a good scene. I also love, even though he ends up being fine when they pull whatever kid out of the water and he's in shock and the mom's like, he's dead, he's dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, right. That, that's, and, and, and Chief's like, no, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's totally shocked. fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that I have from this big chunk before we can move on is uh, I love when Brody and Hooper go out on the water at night. They're basically just like, and you see this in a bunch of movies, just a couple of guys getting hammered on a boat. <laughs> like, And Roy Scheider's character, like you could tell he like doesn't have sea legs and he's kind of like, he's asking, I think he has that joke about like, can you get... Uh, Fuck! What show was it that he meant, they mentioned? He like looked at all the monitors that were in the thing. He was like, "Can you get the Can you get the Saturday Night movie on this or something like that?" Yeah, oh. what show? Yeah, I forgot. I forget what, what it was. Yeah, but yeah. there's, but there's, and like he's slurring. He's kind of like, they're. I mean, they have two bottles of wine. I think between the two of them. But yeah, I just I I love the the banter of just a couple of dudes getting drunk on a boat. <laughs> Um, I love there's one shot like right before they go out where you go through a pair of like shark jaws. Yeah, absolutely. And then out to sea. It looks so cool. Yeah. And and it's like, see, that's the touch of a great filmmaker mm-hmm. setting things up like that. I agree. That shot really stood out for me this time. Yeah. There's a lot. There's so much. Of that. And so much of this movie was shot handheld, which is super cool, which mm-hmm. is why that part of that was to contend with how the water was moving them around so much. But it means that you get a lot of neat stuff like that too. So, I'm always so impressed by that because my hands shake. It's, it's like, how do you? <laughs> yeah, right. Steady cam. And they, well, they had, they Stabilizer. did have, yeah, they had like a, um, I forget what they called it, but it was like a little rig that they set up that was like on this guy, which essentially like had a metal bar that was protruding into his chest so that he was just holding it like a, like a little cannon wow. the whole time. And apparently it was like loud as hell too, <laughs> like, like <laughs> most steady cam stuff, but. Quint desires to take on the mission alone. Brody insists that he and Hooper will go as well. There is instant tension between Quint and Hooper, with Quint seeing Hooper as a rich snob with no real shark hunting experience and Hooper seeing Quint as a reckless thrill seeker with a bullish attitude. Though Hooper proves himself to be a capable sailor, the discomfort remains as the three men embark on their voyage in Quint's boat, the Orca. Once out to sea, the men set about attracting the shark by ladling chum off the stern of the boat. Quint attaches a line of piano wire to a sturdy rod secured against a specialty designed fishing chair on the deck. Very cool. After hours of waiting, the wire goes taut and eventually snaps as the immense creature swims under the boat before disappearing again. Brody, Hooper, and Quint realize the enormous strength of their adversary. As the voyage presses on, Brody grumpily ladles (laughs) more chum off the back of the boat when without warning, the massive head of a great white shark emerges briefly in their wake. Brody is stunned and alerts the others. Such a classic scene mm-hmm. him just standing up I, yeah, yeah, so anyway. his face you see that in like uh, montages and stuff too anyway that's that's movie magic shit love it uh, <laughs> brody has done and alerts the others hooper notices the shark beginning to circle the boat and quint rushes out for a look he estimates that the shark is about 25 feet long and weighs three tons mm. that's fucking huge quint begins to fire harpoons tied to plastic barrels intended to both slow the shark down and make its presence more visible the barrels have no effect, and the shark easily pulls them underwater. Just in time, Hoover manages to attach a tracking device to the bees before it retreats again. That night, the men have dinner and drinks below deck, and Hooper surprisingly begins to bond with Quint as they compare scars from their experiences in various sea creatures. Brody notices that Quint had a tattoo removed, and Quint admits that the former tattoo represented the U.S. Navy cruiser Indianapolis, on which he had been a sailor in World War II. Quint goes on to illustrate the horrible day in July of 1945 when the Indianapolis was struck by Japanese torpedoes, leaving over 1,100 men floundering in shark-infested waters. Quint witnessed 800 of his comrades being picked off by sharks and is clearly affected by the chilling memory. The experience, combined with survivor's guilt, had ignited Quint's deep-seated hatred of sharks and the ruthless satisfaction he finds in hunting them down. After Quint's story, the men sing a rowdy sea shanty to lighten the mood (laughs) in one of the more annoying scenes of the movie. (laughs) 
but are interrupted by the returning shark violently crashing into the boat and causing a leak. Quint rushes on deck and fires a rifle at the three telltale barrels, and the shark escapes once again. So <laughs> before before we end up um, in that incredible monologue that Quint does, uh, there I love that he is that Quint is a huge thorn in Hooper's side right away. What are you, some kind of half-assed astronaut? And yeah. like just constantly talking shit to him. Um, Farewell and adieu. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he also, he is just like, when they're loading up the boat, he is just like a storm cloud of shit talking the whole time. And he just doesn't stop going. Yep. Um, you go into the cage, cage goes into the water. Yeah. <laughs> sharks in the water. <laughs> Our shark. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, we kind of touched on this earlier, but like, Something that is ever present in that behind the scene in the making of Jaws thing is they talk about like, well, it was really easy shooting the first like forty days, and then we and then we realized that we were running mm-hmm. out of like land stuff to shoot, so they shot it on the water, and it was just like, I know it was a gigantic pain in the ass, and they like couldn't ever stay anchored, and it would be like twelve hour shooting day, maybe three hours of actual shooting. Wow. The water stuff looks great though, like mm-hmm. it kind of like is the became the gold standard for how you shoot something out on open water like Mm -hmm. that. Um, It looks great. The scale is, is huge. Like it feels, it feels like you're out there with them um, in a kind of hopeless way. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I feel like too, with the scenes on the boat, as hard as they were to shoot, like you wait and wait and wait to get the perfect shot. You know, the water's calmed down a bit. The boat's in the right direction. Then like a sailboat, you know, goes by in the background. You've got to wait three hours for the sailboat to go by. Yep. But also part of it was the the scouting or to where it was, was there was no land in the background. You had to be able to pan across the water and have no land. Because then the viewer would say, well, why don't you just like, go towards land? Right. But if you think about, like, if they would have made this now, they wouldn't have even had to wait and do any of that. They would have had some stupid, like, oh. CGI background where they didn't have to wait for anything. But yep. knowing they were just, like, you know, filmmakers in a boat, actors in a boat, like... Yeah waiting and waiting i can just feel the the seasickness like the inside stomach churning of brody and he hates water he you know it's just like he's on there with his rubbers and it's just um, and i love it when he's the one who he gets a little bit more like calm and but one of my favorite lines is when he's throwing the chum in (laughs) <laughs> when he says slow ahead, I can go slow ahead. Come on down and trump some of this shit. And then that's when you see the giant shark yeah. head and that panic on his face. I love that. If you want to like just put like two minutes of a movie, like that's it for me. That's mm-hmm. that and is then, like that's the awards show clip. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, play that. And then when he goes in to tell Quint, you're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Like it's that's like improvised line. I didn't yeah, know that. Oh, that's really? amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, then later on too, after they start. They realize what they're really up against. And then Brody's like, you're going to get a bigger boat, right? You're going to get a bigger, bigger boat, boat, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that that came back again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also love, I don't have a note about who says this, but I have a quote. He's gone under the boat. He's a smart fish. He's a smart fish. He's a bad fish. Yep. He can do anything. This fish amazing. <laughs> yeah. In the book, they, they say the word fish a lot. Do they? And really? I love that they call it a fish. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So little things like that after having just read the book and then watching it for the first time afterwards, I picked up on more of that little, because even in the, the town meeting earlier, Quinn says something about a big fish. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I call this a movie about a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> a prequel to Big Fish. I, um, there is a, there's like a weird friendliness that Quint has with Brody, like especially when the tanks come out and like there's a, there's, like during all that tension, like Quint's really nice to Brody and I really like it. Mm-hmm. It's like the one likable, like truly likable thing that you could say about Quint. Cause he, like he, he like kind of is just like, there, there, little guy. Yeah. You know, when he <laughs> well, he was the, showing him how to make the knots. Yeah. Right. He was trying to also keep him safe because he knew how terrified he was and how he did not know anything about yeah. boats or sea or anything. Yeah. But that one line I think is so nuanced. And I think he's also being condescending when he says, uh, next time you want to. Next time you want to open those up, you just ask me which yeah, which rope to pull. To pull. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, he says it really calmly. Yeah. But it's kind of condescending. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know. It's but it's I, so I, nuanced. Yeah. It's, no, it's it's yeah. It that speaks to how 
great that it is. Yeah, yeah it, I I don't know if I would have picked up on condescending. I would have been like, thanks, mister. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't know what the fuck to do right. there either, you know? <laughs> Um, there's also a shot of the shark swimming underneath the boat that I loved. I have no memory of this, but I just thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, and the uh, is this where they measure like are like comparing each other's scars? The scars. I hate this like weird dick measuring contest. Like, oh, this scar I got from being cool. This scar I got from being even cooler. Yeah. I love it's it like, from oh. a dumb guy perspective, where it's just like <laughs> watching guys be dumb. There's a lot of that in this movie. There's a I want to know what Brody's scar is. I would assume like appendix or something. Yeah, yeah but, he, but, but he just kind of like shows it for a second. <laughs> and like, oh, I better not. <laughs> that's the actor's. <laughs> that's the actor's real appendix. Scar. Oh really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, I do like. I do like that scene. I like the song they sing. But what what I like about it, or one of the things I like, is the irony of it. Like there are these men drinking in this tiny boat in the middle of the giant ass ocean waiting for this giant, you know, 25 foot killer shark out there. And they're comparing the wounds they've gotten from previous sharks and marine life. I just think that there's this irony in it. Yeah. Just there's literally sitting ducks waiting to get another giant scar. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's a scene that's like, it's so dumb at first. Cause there's like, look at this. And then, <laughs> and then it ends with like a stupid joke with like, Rip my heart out, <laughs> yeah. and then it, and then it's just like one of the best monologues in a movie period. Mm-hmm. Which I read something earlier today about like he. Uh, so originally he got drunk in real life to try to deliver that line, like like he would have actually. But like he was having such a hard time actually getting lines out that they couldn't use any of it. So he felt like shit. <laughs> and then the next day they shot it and he got it in one one take. Well, they had to, there are like three different writers involved. Like, well, yeah, and three, that's all. It's contested. It kind of got pared down. Yeah, but Steven Spielberg says that's his favorite part of the movie. Oh, I mean, I don't blame him. It's it's the any way we delivered the bomb is that's that that's so fucking cool. Sorry, I love it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. They're also when they're down there on the boat, like the power goes out, it gets dark, and it's dark, and you can hear the water, and it's very like ominous and creepy and you're like mm-hmm. oh god this shark is out there and it's dark and then it slowly like segues to like the daylight in the next day and then they're like back to business getting the barrels ready and yeah um yeah. an alternate perspective please <laughs> tell us how it sucks allison yeah i love the beginning of this movie mm-hmm. i love the end as soon as the shark actually shows up the middle boys on a boat not my thing sure but um yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's very slow to me. And I think this is what made me not like Jaws originally. But I do love, they are all singing the song and the shark is like, I hate this song. I need to make them stop immediately. <laughs> and he starts like breaking the boat. I think that's so funny. Mm-hmm. I laughed for like 20 fucking minutes over that. <laughs> the shark hates this song. He doesn't I, want to hear I about like these Spanish ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bruce has had it. Bruce is like, like turn it off. Yeah. Next song. Get out yeah. of my ocean. <laughs> you giggling jackasses. <laughs> you want to see a scar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it might be coming up, but let me just ask, did you guys register that weird, weird purple streak in the sky yeah. that looks like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. is it a, like shooting, a shooting star? star. It's supposed to be like a shooting mm-hmm. star, yeah. Yeah. There's two of them. Two of You mean yeah. right together? There's one, then in, uh, like a little bit later, another one happens. It's funny because oh, I- Oh, I only saw one. There was supposed to have been two. a meteor shower that night. And it's like, I don't remember if it was in a line of like a, like, offhand line of dialogue that that was mentioned, but they talked about it in the, uh, the making of documentary. Um, oh, I missed was that like they were, they were out having a view of the meteor shower that night. I don't, I don't would have never picked up on that if it wasn't told to me. I mean, I saw the thing obviously, but mm-hmm. I didn't put together meteor shower. But, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks a little hokey. Yeah. Well, it was added <laughs> like in, it was ball. added in post. Yeah. One yeah. thing, like I did watch, um, for the first time, the making of, and I don't remember that part at all, but when I was rewatching the movie and I saw the red streak and I was like, wait, do they accidentally keep like fireworks in the background? I thought they were waiting for things to, you know, be gone mm-hmm. before they filmed. And then it happened again. I kind of yeah. rewound it. I'm like, oh, it happened two times. And then I was reading an article this morning where Steven Spielberg referenced that. And he like, he had, they added that in post to give you kind of the effect of like how the creature had re- reached like otherworldliness. Hmm. Hmm. At that point in the movie. 
So hmm. I thought that was neat. Huh. I like totally missed yeah. this shot. Yeah. I even knew it was there. I did yeah. not see it. It's, yeah. it's, you know what? It's not important, but if you've seen yeah. the movie a hundred times and love it, you're looking for a little pokey thing. So. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun, All little, good. fun little thing to see. Fun facts. And yeah. I did read that that became like some sort of like calling card for Spielberg where he puts it in other stuff too. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Aww. Yeah. I it kind of like the Wilhelm scream thing, mm. which would be funny if there was one right there. <laughs> Wait, there is a meteor in other movies of his, uh, yeah, like I don't, a shooting star. Or yeah, something. like the shooting star thing. Like I think it does happen in ET a couple of times. Schindler's List. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to add a bright, bright spot to the movie. Oh man, um, I, I don't think e- so. ET it makes sense because space. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I don't. Th- I don't. Yeah. No, I don't think there's one in Schindler's List, but it, maybe there is. <laughs> or like Close Encounters. That's space. Anything oh. involving space. <laughs> oh, Christopher, thank you for that. <laughs> um. Uh, okay. To kind of echo something that you were saying, Allison. One of the, I think that if I were to, so I love this movie. But if I'm going to try to find things to criticize about it, yeah, the stuff out on the water does change the pace of the movie quite a bit. Um, Not necessarily in a positive way. My one gripe, and Christopher, I feel like we actually did talk about this at one point, um, in an otherwise terrific score, there is a piece of music that happens when they are firing the barrels that is so strangely upbeat and (laughs) so, like... It doesn't. It 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 doesn't feel. My knee jerk reaction when I hear it is like this doesn't fit in this movie. This mm-hmm. tonally is just off. Um, and I was thinking about that yesterday when I was watching it again. But now that I, th- with that in mind, w- when that scene is happening, I don't know what else you could play because that I feel like even though it's jaunty and kind of stupid sounding, it what it reminds me of is the beef. It's what's for dinner commercial. Do you know the one that I'm talking I about? I think so. Um, there's this like song, you know, it's like a, it's called, Oh, why is that familiar to me? That like unlocked something in my brain. It's in a bunch of commercials, including beef, it's what's for dinner. And it's from, it's like a, it's a section of a piece called Rodeo Suite and it's called Hoedown. Um, it's like, it, it gets used a lot, but it kind of sounds like that to me. Um, but the thing is, watching it again, like after I felt like pretty confident, like, yeah, that sucks and I don't like it. If you watch that scene, like what's happening there is like they're watching barrels move across the water. <laughs> so you have to have something to show that that movement is happening. Yeah, I, I call this song second barrel theme. <laughs> <laughs> I like I I take I take note of that part when this because the song is so different. It stands out, but I do like that there and there's a shot with there's the three of them are kind of standing close to each other or in one line at the end of the boat watching. Yeah. And it does kind of add that they're going off into something like there's an epic journey ahead. They're marching off. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Like it's almost like when that music swells up, it's like almost supposed to give you this, this like feeling like, Hey, it's working. It's going to be <laughs> fine. And then it, and then it like, fades yeah. down when the barrels go back underwater. Well, sort of like a, like Indiana Jones. That's how I kind of think it is, like a, like a, uh, an adventure theme. Mm-hmm. You kind of have this bit of an adventure theme popped in there because they're, you know, on a boat hunting for something. Yeah. And it's dangerous. Dun, 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 dun. Right. That's how I see it, which makes sense because, you know, Spielberg. Just put a little fedora on, Bruce. Wow, uh, I would love that. <laughs> hey, it's um, there's a toy just like that in, I think, Toy Story 2. Yes, there is. Uh, <laughs> is that the? Is yeah? It, the shark's shark. right ahead. He goes, "I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy." <laughs> yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, his name is Bruce. Hey guys, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that rules. <laughs> um, also, the shark in Finding Nemo was Bruce. <sighs> Everybody, fish loves are friends, Jaws. not food. I love that you know the shark. Of course, the star of Toy yeah, Story I, 2. It happened so early in the movie, and I love that. I love those Toy Story movies. I, yeah. He's in the movie for like seven seconds. I know, but it's a terrific <laughs> bit. <laughs> Put on somebody's hat and pretend you're them. That's a good bit. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any other notes about this before we finish this out? We're about to get into the 
grasp. About uh, to get into the rest of the water stuff <laughs> because there's a bunch of it. Okay. The next day, the men attempt to repair the boat with limited success. Seawater has contaminated the diesel fuel and the engine is very damaged. When the shark returns, Quint instructs Hooper to grab the barrels with a hook and secure them to the stern. Hooper succeeds, and Quint attempts to drag the shark by powering the boat to full throttle. <laughs> but the shark uses its incredible strength to pull the boat in the opposite direction, nearly capsizing it and causing further structural damage before Quint cuts the ropes attached to the boat. The shark breaks free from the barrels and submerges again. Quint demonstrates his mad obsession with the shark by destroying the radio with which Brody was attempting to call for help. <laughs> in a weird scene. The shark begins to chase the boat. And Quint steers back towards land at full speed, dismissing Hooper's protests that he is overtaxing the already damaged engine. When the engine inevitably fails, the boat is left slowly to sink. Quint, strangely calm, offers life jackets to the other men, though he takes none for himself. Hooper resorts to putting on his scuba gear and having Quint and Brady and Brody lower him into the water inside a shark-proof cage. His aim being to inject the shark with poison using a harpoon syringe. Pretty dumb plan. <laughs> The cage proves to be no match for the shark, who attacks Hooper with such ferocity that he drops the harpoon and is forced to hide in a reef while his cage is destroyed. I don't know if that would work. <laughs> Brody and Quint haul up the remains of the shark cage and can only assume that Hooper is dead. The shark then hilariously leaps from the water like a breaching whale and lands most of its body on the sinking stern of the boat, nearly breaking the vessel in two. Quint and Brody desperately cling to the cabin as the boat is upended with the shark's gaping mouth at the bottom of the drop. Quint ultimately loses his grip and slides into the mouth of the shark and is very gruesomely killed. Great screaming during that. The shark slides back into the water. Horrified and believing himself to be the only survivor of this seemingly doomed mission, Brody hastily enters the cabin of the rapidly sinking boat and finds one of Hooper's pressurized air tanks. The shark smashes through the side of the boat and Brody attempts to fend it off by bludgeoning it with the tank. The shark retreats, now with the air tank lodged, lodged in its jaws. Now possessing some of Quint's courage and madness, Brody begins to fire at the approaching shark, aiming at the air tank in its mouth. At last, Brody hits his mark, the tank explodes, and Brody laughs triumphantly as blood and shark flesh <laughs> rain down around him into the sea. <laughs> Moments after the shark's vibrant destruction, Hooper, fi Hooper finally surfaces, and the exhausted Brody is relieved to see him alive. The men share a weak chuckle before assembling a makeshift raft and paddling back to Amity Shore to set up for Jaws 2. Such a good ending. Yep. Just paddling away and it's quiet and they're in the open water. Yep. Um, Smile, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Yep. Good good shit. <laughs> Real good shit. Um, I love, because you barely see the shark at the beginning and it's like that classic horror, like mm -hmm. it's better to not see it. It's, it's an like, hour in before we see the shark. And you see its face, uh, in that earlier scene, but seeing the whole thing, I was like, holy shit, this mm -hmm. shark is so big. It's like... He's chonky. He, he's like four times bigger than any shark I have seen in mm -hmm. an aquarium before. Terrifying. Yeah. I Yeah, I was like shocked by it. They did a really great job with... The, I know that it uh, like most things with this movie, it was a pain in the ass, mm -hmm. the Bruce model, but it looks great, especially when you see really it swimming good. past the boat. Yeah, it looks yeah. awesome. Even watching it in, you know, 2024, versus, it's it it's, looks really good. It looks better than the ones that are in the other Jaws movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Then he chomps down on Quint. I'm like, oh, shit, is he the hero? <laughs> he, he just, like, slides down the boat right oh. into the mouth. I hate it so much. It I looks think like, it's cool. It looks no, like it it's is gonna, cool, yeah. but I'm sad. I'm like, oh. It looks for a second like it's yeah. going to pan out okay, like he yeah. could get his feet just right. But <laughs> Like one of those people in the Haunted Mansion when the, the walls stretch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if he could just like hold the jaw open. Yeah. <laughs> if it were a cartoon, he would have escaped. <laughs> yeah, if only I had like a bowling pin to keep his jaws <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. That whole thing is so cool though. Like seeing, like, it's not a slow scene either. You're just watching no. this man get eaten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. And man, he fucks that boat up. Yeah. He's all mad. He just He hates the song. He wants them to stop. <laughs> I can relate to him on that. That song <laughs> that's uh, I think it's mostly hearing Richard Dreyfus sing. It drives me nuts. I don't know why that is, but it just is. So I hate to be such a one note movie commentator, but again, 
it was either this section or the last section where we see this amazing shot that only lasts a few seconds. Someone is way, way, way up on the mast in the crow's nest, and there's a camera even higher than they are, yeah. and you see their view, yeah. and you see them way up high looking around for Jaws. Yeah, oh. and it's it's. I think at that point it's Quint because he's saying stuff to that. Like he's he's still giving them little directions. Yeah, and at one of those points, it's like he's he's like fully cloaked in shadow. Like yes, like that's where he's like. He's Ahab. He's nuts. Yeah. He's fully right. lost his yep. mind. Oh, why does he destroy the phone? I like did not understand that at all. So I'm with you on that. I don't think it's well communicated, but I think that they're le- they lean awfully hard on that next line. You're certifiable. You know that, which is like a reductive way to say that he has problems. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like. Up until a few years ago, whenever that scene would happen, I would wonder the same thing. Like, what the fuck did you just do that for? And he doesn't like have a like maniacal laugh or anything to yeah. punctuate it. But watching it again, thinking about it critically, it's like it's just to show that he's nuts. He's all in. He's all business. <laughs> he wants that yeah, shark at right. no cost. We're not getting help. We have no time. We're not getting a bigger boat. Right. Yeah, yeah I thought he just had too much of a death wish. And I thought yeah. he was just leaving everything up to fate. Either I'm going to survive this or the shark's going to get me. Mm-hmm. Right. And we, the radio is just frivolous and there's that earlier scene where where someone where brody's wife calls yeah and he's so curt and dismissive he's like yep everything's great and he's just tired of frivolity or mm. something yeah killing yeah. only strange yes mess. <laughs> killing sharks specifically or maybe it's my time right yeah yeah maybe yeah no life jacket mm-hmm. well i don't think any of them expected to survive you know, I mean, mm-hmm. especially once Brody watches, well, if Brody watches, well, I, I guess the going in Quint totally, they just thought they were going to kill the shark and mm-hmm. then all go back to shore and be yay heroes. But like the way it unfolds and once you watch, like you, you think Hooper, well, as if you're, you think Hooper is dead and then if Quint is dead and then it's just Brody, Brody, who also says earlier in the film that he's never shot a gun before. Mm-hmm. He's on the tippy tip of the boat as it's already sinking and like it's, little it's six shots. I counted. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's never shot a gun before. Yeah. Six shots. He he is able to aim in the shark's mouth and hit that tank. Yeah. Um, so good. Yeah. I'm just like, look at him. He's a badass. After all of this adventure, he has just like gotten a gold star. He's a he's a certified badass now. Right. Isn't it scary though, as the boat is sinking and all the stuff is just flying around the deck, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so scary yeah. and it's, eerie. It's awesome because you you think that Hooper's gone and then at the end, like you don't know where, what happened to him. He He's hid. Just hanging he out. hid. And then he just kind of <laughs> swims over. He doesn't call out, Hey, Brody, I'm so glad to see you. You're alive. Right. He just like swims over and they start laughing. Yeah. I love that. I do too. It's, it's they're just like, they've been through so much. They're just like, What? what it's like all you what? can do is laugh. We're at both that here. Point. And then Hooper says, Quint? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Yeah, that checks yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's it. Yeah. That's all she wrote. Man, I would not be going down in that little cage though, especially when oh, the God, boat's no. like not in good shape. It looks yeah. like it's made out of nothing. Yeah, it's like clothes hangers, shark cage. Mm. And like I, I, this thing where he just like went and just kind of hid in the reef. Like, I don't think that's gonna work. I, <laughs> <laughs> How long was he there? Yeah. Like it's I was thinking like, about like his tank. Just watching him be like, fuck, there it goes. It's still up there. Still, oh, oh man, he's really fucking the boat up. Good luck, Brody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this, man. <laughs> Let me go get my little spear. Did he have the spear when he came back up? I, I didn't notice it. I don't it. think so. It fell yeah. down. Yeah. It's probably yeah. hard to swim with. Yeah. Unless you're Aquaman. Right. <laughs> Which is not. Yeah. It's also no. really sweet, too, when they're going or floating away on the barrels, paddling to shore. Yeah. And Brody says something like, I used to hate the water. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that was the last line. That, that ending yeah. is so abrupt. It's yep. perfect, but I was like, damn, that was it? Yep. We're, okay. Yep. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, this movie, it does what it needs to, and then it gets out. This movie, next year's the 50th anniversary. 50 years ago, this freaking movie was made. 50 years ago. Can you believe oh it? God, you're and right. we're still sitting here. We're sitting here. We're sitting yeah. here today talking about it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. So it'll be, they were, it, this movie's already made at this point 50 years ago. Yeah. Wild. The f- Yeah. The first blockbuster. Well, it's kind of. Yeah. Mm. 
Well, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the end of my notes for this movie. Jaws. Um, does anybody have anything else before we get into giving it the old score treatment? Scarometer. So, I think this is a fantastic movie. I think the French horn is way overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> I really do because every time I hear that, I think of Planet of the Apes, <laughs> and it's great. Also, nobody mentioned one of my favorite lines. There are so many favorite lines in this. When Richard Dreyfus says, "Boys, oh boys," I think he's come back for his noon feeding. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Pretty classic Spielberg stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So I have to give this a 10 out of 10. Uh, I think it's it's just great. And uh, I, I've watched it a bunch of times. I just think it's a wonderful movie. It's also really part of Americana. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. For the scare meter, I'm rating this as my, I don't know, 12, 14-year-old self. <laughs> and... Um, I guess if I was being honest and I was that young, I'd probably give it a four. Um, you know, now it's not so scary. It's still a little scary, but I'm going to stick to my, my four as my adolescent self rating. All right. Well, I, 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 broke, I broke the scare meter. I know. <laughs> but you broke I'm, it? I'm, Wait, you gave it a four out of five? This is your second highest score. You gave The Descent a five. Mm. Oh, that's true. That did scare the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> Why would you remember? <laughs> oh, yes. I blocked it out months ago. I remember I gave this. <laughs> we crawled out of the cave and dove deep into the water. <laughs> Christopher, do you remember when you gave a movie one nod off cat face over five? I remember that. <laughs> Night, Night of the, the Creeps. creeps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. It's interesting watching, like, we're looking at a list of, well, Alice and I are looking at a list of our previous ones. It's so weird because our stuff is all over the place. Um, like, I was, I had an idea of what I was going to rate it, and I was like, well, wait, I don't really give many things that, but um, I'm also going to give a movie a 10 out of 10. I, it's, I can't, I have no negative things to say about it. I've watched it every freaking year. It's just something about it. It's so... Plus, I love summer, and uh, it makes me feel warm. Um, so 10 out of 10, I love watching this. Again, Like as like an adolescent, I was heavily influenced by all movies that were Spielberg was doing. Um, so watching this like as like a young adult later, like and putting all the pieces together and things like that, just a solid, solid movie. And I'm glad they finished making the movie. And then we can sit here 49 years later and talk about uh, a movie about a big fish. Um, and a smart fish and a bad fish. A smart fish and a bad fish. <laughs> um, he had big fish. Um, I will, for scare meter I'm trying to think about it, like watching it, like not for the first time because I don't remember, but like as a movie, this is one of the scarier films that people can watch, whether you like horror films or not, because the, the threat is not on screen constantly. You're not running from something. Well, you theoretically, I guess you are, but you still... You don't know what you're running from or where it is. So there's that. You're lost in the dark. Um, I guess I'll give it a three out of five. Three out of five. Um, I mean, watching it yesterday, I was not afraid, but you're sucked in. I also really, really like how there are so many movie or camera perspectives from the shark. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting. Um, I'm going to stop because I can talk for another half hour. <laughs> but yeah, four out of five on the old scare-o-meter for Moa. Nice. Wait. Three, three out, out of five. five. Three out of, what did I say? No, three. Three out of five for scarometer, please. Okay. Perfect. Just making sure I have not had a stroke in the last 10 seconds. Ooh. Um, yeah, so this is not my favorite horror movie, but you know, games gotta recognize game. This is like one of the best movies of all time. Um, I love act one and three. Two drags too much for me, but I can just fast forward. You don't really need it. <laughs> Um, and I have to say, one, this got me so psyched for summer. Mm. I like as soon as I saw all the beach scenes, I was like, wow, it's going to be so great in a couple of months when it's like actually warm and we can go out. Like, I'm just I'm psyched. And the other thing that I loved about it, a horror movie you can watch during the day. I had the mm -hmm. windows open. It was like the nicest viewing experience. And I had a great time watching this. So. I am going to give it a 9 out of 10. Holy smokes. I, you blew me out of the water. 
<laughs> Good. Dragged me under the water. You don't want to be in the water. There's a bazillion jaws, I guess. <laughs> wow. Um, Scarometer. This one's easy. One, I can't swim. I don't like the ocean, so I'm never going to go in it. So um, it's got that descent thing where it's like, I'm never going to go <laughs> underneath the ground. So like, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll never be in this position. So I am not super scared of it. I'll give it a two though, because some of the, uh, honestly, those um, like photographs of real shark bite mm -hmm. victims, ew, mm -hmm. that's uh, some life changing shit right there. So I will give it a two out of five for that. And uh, the scene where that guy's head pops out, that was, like, very fucked up to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, two out of five and nine out of ten. Well, I think it's obvious that this is a this is a ten out of ten movie for me um, because I'm a child and I always pick movies that I absolutely love, except for uh, <laughs> The Prowler, I guess. But, yeah. Um, well, I love The Prowler now, so you nailed that one. I had fun with that. But, you know, that was that was me specifically trying to pick something I hadn't seen that was to hilarious. change stuff up a little bit. <laughs> oh, my bit. God. I saw the um, uh, cover of it on Amazon Prime the other day, and I was like, oh, man, yeah. great memories. It's a, <laughs> yeah. And, like, I, I, it brings me joy to hear each of you say the things that you were saying about the movie in your, in your scoring because I kind of picked this on purpose knowing that we would be watching it in February and, like – the anticipation of summer and it is it is a it is always a breezy watch. Mm -hmm. I've never put on Jaws and been in a bad mood or been <laughs> or been put in a bad mood by it. I mm -hmm. always watch it during the day. It is my Fourth of July movie. Oh yeah. I've seen it in a packed theater. I watch it in my living room. I've watched it on tiny shitty little TVs. I've watched <laughs> it edited for TV. It always works. Um it's like it's in the same class for me as as Alien. Or Silence of the Lambs, where it's just like it. It still has that, or the or the Shining, even that it has that thing that, um, really affected me when I was young. And I know that it 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 made me a fan of Spielberg. Mm -hmm. It made me a fan of horror. Um, it made me scared of water. Um, yeah, it's just it, there's there's hardly I I have to think hard to think of things I don't like about this movie. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'll never get sick of it. So easy, ten out of ten. Scarometer. If you, if you asked young Matt on vacation up in, I'm th I'm thinking it was Traverse City. Um, I, that would have been a five out of five. Where the Terrifi sharks are absolutely fucking terrifying. Because to me, it's just like Michigan looks like an ocean. Yeah, you know. Um, and it's, o it's only that way if you look at it from the water. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Isn't that what he says? That makes sense. Yes. <laughs> Good follow up. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, I would have definitely said five out of five, totally scary. I've seen this movie a billion times. I'm not surprised by anything anymore, but I still think the ocean is, other than space, is the scariest place you could possibly be. Um, mm -hmm. So I th and I think that most of the things that are scary about this movie still hold up. Sharks are real. They might not be. They might not be that big, and they might not be that Bruce ferocious. Bruce is real, but they're definitely fucking real. They're out there. I've mm -hmm. seen them. But... I, I have seen sharks. It's scary as fuck. Yeah. I, I uh, little anecdote. I might not leave this in here because it's not adding anything. But like one year that I went to Hawaii to visit my parents. My parents lived in Hawaii for a while. There was a shark attack in the reef that we would go snorkeling a lot, and wow. it was a tiger shark, and the mm -hmm. woman died. And, wow. like, I remember a different time that we were swimming in a reef, and there was a tiger shark spotted, and everybody was taken out of the water. It was just farting around in there. It wasn't doing anything. But yeah. the way that we think about sharks, largely influenced by this movie yeah, and, its, exactly. and its impact on popular culture, everybody was terrified, understandably. Yeah. Cause yeah, if a shark bites you, if it just, like, grazes you, it could kill you because it would get an artery or something. But anyway, uh, sharks are scary. Uh, nature. Nature is, like, if you think about, like, things that scare people, nature. Yeah, being totally. Being lost, being trapped. The ocean. I mean, uh, at a one cave. point Brody says something about drowning being scary. Drowning is scary. The ocean's mm -hmm. scary. And there's sharks in it. So, that said, scare meter, we're going to make, I'm going to say four. Um not as I think I maybe rated Sounds of the Lambs higher than that. 
Uh, I don't remember, but nope. same. Four. Same. Okay. Well, I think sharks and serial killers are equally as scary, and they're real. Well, that another uh, thing too, serial killers like yeah, 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 yeah much yeah, scarier than monsters. Yeah, and like it's, humans and animals are the real monsters. And it, like this movie manages to still be scary while also having all of these like funny and sweet and <laughs> like again Norman Rock- Rockwell yeah. moments that just it's a fuck this movie rules. <laughs> Aww. Um. Yeah, well, that was Jaws. Nature is real. Sharks are real. <laughs> yeah. Teeth are real. She's joking. I'm not. <laughs> Richard oh. Dreyfus is real. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Dreyfus is real and, a, and apparently is kind of a prick. Uh, he and Bill Murray hated each other in What About Bob? Yeah. Well, I, I hate mean, Bill Murray. That's great. Yeah. Well, and that made the movie even more effective watching them because they hate each other in that movie yeah. like, as, as, as characters. Yeah, yeah. I know. Dude, that movie, I've never seen my dad laugh so hard Aww. ever in my entire life. And what about Bob? What about Bob? My dad loses his crap. And like when my dad is showing and feeling an emotion of some yeah, sort, yeah, whether yeah. it's crying or laughing, I'm just like, whoa, what's going on? I mean, <laughs> with good reason, that is yeah. a, that's a good one. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll be in, I'll be just doing anything. And I'll think, okay, baby steps to the office. Yeah. Uh-huh, baby steps uh-huh, to the office. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, don't need to watch the movie. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's so stupid. Who the hell is Bob? Is if he you like what you hear to her today? <laughs> if you like hearing right. about Bob? Yeah, if you like what about Bob and you want to let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, listeners, if you like what you heard today and you want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thank you for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. What Scares Us.